The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 4th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Okay, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But I know many of you can't call in, but you do have a question. So we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send that off early and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, like John and Dan and Duncan are, you can always send me a text or a private ping or whatever it might be, because I'd love to take a look at what you want to look at as well. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow off 109, S&P's down 5, NASDAQ's down 25, NASDAQ 100, that is. Russell's up 7, semis are up 74, trannies are up 48, the uh, New York Stock Exchange up 19 points. Gold's up 22 bucks, silver's up 52 pennies, lights recruit is back 47 cents, natural gas having a nice day up 8% or 14 cents, and the 30-year treasury printed out at 119.14. Now, our leader to the club in the clubhouse to the upside is MicroStrategy. 239 bucks, 22 percent. Super Micro, 216 bucks, 23 percent. Nvidia, 31 bucks, nearly 4 percent. Broadcom, 31 bucks, 2 percent. Decker's Outdoor, 26 bucks, 3 percent. To the downside, Regenerate Pharmaceuticals off 15. Workday's down 15. Mercado Libre is off 18. Tesla's off 11. So we got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's take a, as long as we're on this set of charts here, let's take a look at what equity futures are doing as we speak right now. Let's take a look at them in terms of other currencies. So on Friday, we had new all-time highs in terms of the, for the ES mini we're taking a look at, in terms of uh, U.S. dollars, in terms of euros, in terms of yen. This morning, we're at a new all-time high in terms of yen out there. So pounds, euros, yen. We tell you that's what we're looking at out here on the screen here. The NQ, new all-time high in U.S. dollars this morning. On Friday is when it hit its new all-time high in terms of euros. Same thing in pounds, but this morning in terms of yen, we're at a new all-time high. Why is that important? So important to understand what's going on around the globe. This is a real breakout that we have. It's an international rally. We take a look at what's going on inside the equity futures. That doesn't mean it goes up forever, but what, do, what it does mean is when we do get pullbacks out there, unless those other international traders start getting on the game, that will limit the uh, move to the downside. Still, price will try to seek out support whenever that happens. We'll take a look at when that could happen, and it could be sometime this week, but only time will tell. Why are we looking at this? Well, we've looked at this like uh, this before with regard to the equity futures, with regard to the cash indices, but we haven't done it. What a CV failed to do, and I uh, hurt my now. Uh, it's too bad that I failed to do that because we're going to take a look at gold. So if you were listening to the 11 o'clock update, what I said is it's a real breakout party inside of gold. What do you mean, Stevie? Well, let's go take a look at how gold is priced in other major currencies. We can take now what I'm doing here because you can do this too as well. So you, each of you can do this on your own systems, which is why I chose the GLD versus the gold futures contract. 
which gets complicated anyways. We start going back to historical months because of whether it's continuous contracts that we're looking at. But we take a look at the GLD. This is something each of us can do. Now, if you take a look at the left-hand panel out there, that is the GLD priced in U.S. dollars. Its all-time high was on August 6, 2020. That got negated today. We're at a new all-time high in terms of GL, the GLD uh, in U.S. dollars. Well, we are in, we are at a new all-time high in the GLD in terms of Great British pounds out there. We've been in new all-time highs in terms of the GLD for Japanese yen for a couple of weeks. In fact, you know, it's hard for me to even keep up with the line. That line was drawn in there 29.352 just before we came on the air out here. So we got a breakout going there at new all-time highs. The same thing with regard to the gold in terms of euros. That was at new all-time highs on Friday. Uh, we're new all-time highs in terms of Aussie dollars. So we've got some major currencies here, just like we took a look at at the beginning of the year. This is a major breakout that is going on in Goldilocks. Hmm, something to think about. Now, if we go over to my white background charts, which is what we're going to flip to next out here. Let me see if there was anything else I wanted to share with you on this set of charts. I don't think so. So let's go take a look at the white background charts here. Oh, gosh, can I get to the right ones? I hope this is it. Um, it's hard for me to see. Let's see. Yeah, okay, that's it. Okay. So we got gold here. Now, what I'm looking at, what I want to look at right now, is first the, the key level of resistance. And it's really a weekly level of resistance, and that's at 21.13.40. So here's the April contract. So at least we're sticking here. We're able to. we got enough data to stick with this. Not that much data, but enough data here to stick with to see now you've got this TD9 count breakdown resistance level at the 21.13.40 level. That was tested back here. When I say back here, let me get my uh, cursor out. That was the week that ended December the 8th. Now, because that was a bearish engulfing candle, and right now we're trading above this level, there still is resistance here. And that resistance, when we take a look at the gold contract, is going to be the high of that candle session from the week of December 8th. And that's up at the 21.71.50 level. So that's another 50 bucks to the upside. The price closes above that. Boy, it is really telling us about a gigantic breakout that is going on inside of Goldilocks. And what we want to do is we want to be able to buy that uh, next pullback out here. If we take look at the daily time frame the daily time frame right now it looks like it's taking on a td9 count top is that possible let's see yeah so let's pull this back just a tad and so it's taking on this uh, td9 count top that took place on december the 28th and it closed today above the 2118 level will suggest that we're going after those highs that we took a look at just earlier at the 217150 level and that seems to me like a very likely outcome especially knowing that gold is trading at all time highs in terms of those other major currencies there are buyers out there it's not just about what's going on inside the US it's about what's going on inside inside their chart screens as well and they think in terms of their local currencies just as you and I do what else can we see on this uh, chart here for Goldilocks. Ah, the most important, perhaps, and that is this, that I believe, we talked about this a few months ago, that there was a potential that what gold was doing was it setting up the next major bottom out there. And how we tried to identify that was we looked at a two-bar pullback. That's kind of a normal knee-jerk reaction move here, in this case here, a knee-jerk reaction low. Why is that important, that two-bar pullback? We take a look at the last two out here. We've seen two two-bar pullbacks. And the reason is because when we go and we take a look at oh, I need to add some more data here. So we're just about to go to a, a break. I'm going to go ahead and put some more data in here so that I can share with you that thought process. And the reason why the low from February very well have been a major. Did I say major? I meant major, major low. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're talking about that uh, shiny yellow uh, metal called gold out here. If we go back to 1985, just as an example, you can see one heck of a nice run from the lows in uh, February of 1985 all the way up into December of 1987. What I really want you to notice is focus in on the uh, red digits, the red numbers there. Those show you those one, two, three, four, how many consecutive moves lower. You'll see during that bull run, all of the moves lower were two bar moves to the downside out there. Now, let's go ahead and let's fast forward to 2011. 11 out here. I just wanted to make sure I was proving the point by not cherry picking anything. So let's go take a look at that next major run out here in gold. You can see that each of the pullbacks, if you will, look at my cursor, look at those red numbers out there. We didn't see anything last beyond two consecutive sessions to the downside. Now we fast forward to where we're at. The last two retracements that we've seen have both been two bar retracements. There is, we put this and we combine that with the fact that gold is breaking out to new all time highs in all of the major currencies out there, this is a real move out there. And that means this could really be the beginning of a major move. And the cool thing about that, to add to that idea, is the fact that if we go over to my black background charts, give me a moment, we'll do that, and we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, all this is being done right now while we just simply have the U.S. dollar index consolidating with inside its daily profile. If you give me a moment, we'll open up the U.S. dollar index chart. You can see it right here. We, the gold is not breaking out because the dollar has broken down. If anybody's told you that, well, I would say what they should say is that the dollar won't break down until we get two consecutive closes below 103.667. That's the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile. We may get that, but I can share with you that if the move lower here in the dollar isn't really the culprit behind the move higher inside of gold. It's not hurting, but it's not the real reason. It's because gold is now on the screens at all time highs in those other traders out there. And that says, wow. 
we got a major breakout going on inside of uh, Goldilocks out there. All right, so let's go ahead and get to some of the questions because we've had a number of them. So uh, let's uh, start with... Um, Actually, part of that was uh, that some of the questions that had come in were to take a look at the GDX as an example and GLD. So here's the GLD. That kind of got me taking a look at it. There's really not much more. Well, here's what I can share with you with regard to the GLD. The GLD itself is in bar number nine of a TD9 count pattern. I don't believe that gold is. In other words, the GLD is suggesting it's going to complete a TD9 count pattern today. We'll go take a look at the charts for gold. I don't think that is the uh, case out there. But that's the only potential topping signal we take a look at the GLD. I don't really know based on it, you know, for me to do, I don't know what additional work I can do for here. The GLD would say that if on a monthly basis, we just entered the month of March, but if we do see a close above the high from back in August of 2020, that's 194.45. We're trading above that right now. That negates that TD9 count top. So even the charts here for the GLD are suggesting the same thing that you and I just spoke about. It's really important to understand how these major instruments are trading in the major currencies as well, especially right around now. I think there was another request to take look at the GDX. So on the GDX, we now have the GDX testing a key level of resistance out here. That key level of resistance is 28.24. Price can close above that. What the GDX will be generating is a change in trend signal out there. It's already giving you a profile change in trend. It did that on Friday. Now it's going to maybe give you a full change in trend signal with a close above 28.24 today uh, inside the GDX. On the weekly time frame chart, it looks like it wants to go target 29.28 to 29.79 on the monthly. It's a 29 dollar area that's going to be your level of resistance on its further move higher yes and it should definitely move higher if we go take a look at uh, the first request out here from steve woods you want to take a look at smci he's looking at some projections so if we take a look at this here the only concern that you have is that you've now entered bar number eight on a weekly time frame what that suggests to you and i steve-o is the fact that we should see some type of top inside of smci this week between this week and the next two. Right now, when I take a look at the daily time frame, that's saying it's not this week, or at least it's not on Monday out here. What is price doing? Price is taking out a sell the D point pattern that formed out here in the trading session of February the 16th. Now, the volume on that swing point was 34 million shares. You're passing this so far with a little less than two hours of trading with about 7 million shares. So you're, you're, you're passing that swing point with lighter volume. Does that matter? No. It does not matter. As long as price closes above that high, I didn't give you that high, but that high out here is 1077.87, price should continue to move higher. Now, the issue is going to be here. You're looking for a price projection, and I don't see anything that I could really use that would give us a great price projection level. I just don't, Stevie. I can't uh, go ahead and take a, a, a set of swing points and do Fibonacci expansions from them. I don't see anything that I could do. I can't really draw an A to B equals CD pattern here, and, and we use that to identify the next price projection level. I, I just don't see that. What I do see us doing is paying attention to what this is doing on a daily basis, what its patterns are. It has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered, and that's only a, 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 the, what that means is just uh, carry an umbrella with you. If you're walking outside, because it could rain, it could rain, doesn't mean that it will rain. But when the rain does start, you want to have that umbrella out there. And if that umbrella turns into a bearish reversal candle, well, then you would have a top out there. But we don't have that at this stage here. So I'd love to give you a price projection. I can't come up with one, but it does look like we could get a top within the next three weeks out here. So watch the daily time frame chart for some type of topping pattern. And there's nothing that is complete right now. So, Steve, thanks for uh, writing in and asking about S. MCI. We had Alton write in as well. He wanted an upside target on CHK. Let's see if we can do a little bit better job there. We take a look at CHK. Let me make sure. Oh, man, I'm not, I wasn't even on the right page. Oh, Stevie. Hold on. Got to switch back. Got to do that. Oh, man. I was like that that whole time. Son of a gun. All right. So real quickly here. Let me come back real quick. Go over here's the GLD. You can see you're in, you know, the bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. So it will respect that, and it could uh, generate some type of short-term top. Uh, here is the uh, GDX. You can see that uh, TD9 count breakdown level at the 28.24. By the way, the next one, if we do get a close above this area, will be 31.97. Uh, That's over time out there. Uh, then we get back here to the uh, charts for uh, CH. Uh, oops, hold on a second here. 
for CH, uh, for SMCI. Here you can see on SMCI, you can see that this is going to become the weekly bar number eight out there. So that's just something to pay attention to. You can see that Rose Mentum indicator signal that's been triggered, but that itself is not any kind of a uh, top out there. So sorry that I didn't have the uh, charts where it was supposed to be. I'm pretty sure I see that message now inside the den that was alerting me to that, and I ignored it. Don't do that again, Steve. Now let's get to CHK. And the question Alton had written in about was, what's the upside target? So when we look at the daily time frame, wouldn't you say that's pretty easy to identify here right now? Because what we're looking at or what we would give to uh, Alton is the top of the daily profile. And that's at 84.33. So right now, you're just trading, you're consolidating with inside of its profile. It's got strong support. I say strong support because both the bottom and the – oh, I take that back. It's a gigantic profile. So price is trading with inside the sell zone out there. And that means if you did get a close above 84.33, that would be a very positive outcome. It's a real possibility, Alton. And the reason that I say it's a real possibility versus a fake possibility, I suppose. What's a fake possibility? It's an impossibility, but a real possibility uh, because price is trading above resistance. And that's at the 83.11 level. That is the top of that weekly profile. So watch 83.11. As long as CHK is able to remain above that level, then it's got that chance to take out the 84.33 but that's really the next upside area out there we take a look at this instrument if price can close up 84.33 then i would say price gets back towards its recent highs out here and the recent highs i'm referring to are october of last year and that would be in about the 91 dollar level steve roach with tfnn we'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, what is Steve? Do out here. Okay, let's go take a look at arm holdings. This is for Duncan Steve. And Duncan Steve's uh, question is, what's the near-term direction out here? So what we know is over the last two days, Duncan, is that the uh, price has tried to get above the top of its uh, daily profile. Now, this is a bearish structured sell zone that it's in. And that's at 143.03. So you test the swing point out here. You know, the most recent one would have been from the trading day of February 26, volume there, 26 million on Friday. You came up into it with 9 million. Yeah, today, in two hours of trading, you're at 8 million out here, 824. That's pretty decent volume. But uh, so a rejection of this, uh, which means a close below that swing level at 138.18, you know, it'd still be tested to be inside that swing point with volume. So it makes it slightly complicated. Here's the levels that I would be watching. I would be watching 136.15. If price closes below 136.15, and it does it for two consecutive sessions, but even one is going to put you on high alert out there. Is it going to suggest because it's a bear structured profile, Duncan? That price could push down to 118.93. We're not there just yet, but that would be something I'm watching. At day Zen, I'd also watch that oscillator and change on around 141.30. If that level holds, that's pretty good. So right now, here's what we know with regard to arm holdings. The daily time period is having trouble taking out the sellers there at 143.03. That being said, then it says we likely head to the downside. But that downside says you've got to get through 136.15. And as you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're moving lower with more than 9.6 million shares and actually if we take a look at today's volume well you could easily be doing that so watch that as my price gets into that swing area and that's anywhere between 136.29 down to the 131.31 level if i look at a quick 30 minute time frame chart just to try to help out duncan here we see what we see a td9 count top that is held we see td9 count breakdown resistance that is held and we see td9 count breakout support that is holding and so we're consolidating between that support and resistance zone so on a 30 minute basis the answer would come from do we get two consecutive close below 138.58 if we do we'd like likely head lower out there. Otherwise, this could be the uh, bottom and you could just simply rally up towards 140.98, maybe 142 out here. So that's what's going on. When we take a look at arm holding, Stevo. I'd love to be more definitive than that, but I gave you the numbers to be able to pay attention to, and that should at least help guide you as to what its intent is. Let's go take a look at Nike. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan's trying to build a long position here, so let's see if we can help him out. First, what do we got going on inside of Nike? Well, why is he trying to build a long position? Position. Well, one, if we take a look at the daily time frame, it has a beautiful roads to indicator bottom out here. The swing point itself did volume of 10 million shares. Today, you're pulling back with 3.8 so far. So it's pulling back with 10 million shares or thereabouts, or maybe just a little higher. You'd prefer to see something other than that. But the bottom of it, so it's a bullish structure daily profile, along with a prior bottom out here. And so that uh, first level of support is 99.58. So I get the idea of building a position out there. I just wish that Nike was pulling back with lighter volume maybe by day's end in fact it is lighter volume out there now if you were to see a close below the low of february 5th out there that would negate that roads momentum indicator bottom that low is 99.05 and then that would suggest that price would pull back to 95.92 so when you're building up a position out here if price closes below that roads momentum indicator bottom you know that the next place to consider adding would be 95.92 that is the td9 count breakout level that was established uh, Nike out there, and that's what's going on on the weekly time frame. The monthly time frame has support at 96.66 out there. So we're trading below Friday's low. We're trading below last week's low out here. We're not trading below last month's low, but watch that support area inside of Nike. If I were to look at a 30 minute time frame chart, and the reason I say if is because we're going to, just to see if there's any kind of intraday bottom signal out here, the answer is um, yeah, I see a, a potential buy the D point bottom. 
And that just means that we need to, this is candles only four minutes old, so don't know what it looked like at 12 noon. But if you did get this up, turn into a bull, which right now it's a bullish engulfing candle, then you should at least get a rally up towards the 100.59-ish area. Price is able to close above that red oscillator change line. Then you're looking at 103.86 out there inside of Nike. So that's what's going on in the 30 minute, the daily and the weekly, well, as well as the monthly chart. I hope that that helped you out. This looks like this is going to be day number four to the downside for Nike. What happens typically after bar number four out here? Well, we see some uh, bar fives. The last uh, bottom that exceeded uh, bar four was on uh, January 5th, and then we saw a few day rally out there inside of Nike. So I hope that helped you out, Dan. As always, thank you for your request. Let's take a look at Tesla. For John C. and the Tigers in, John is short Tesla and looking for support. So let's go see if we can help John out. Uh, let's actually get the chart up on our screen out here. And we take a look at Tesla. Well, you like today's action out here. Why is that? Well, one, because it's trading lower. But two, because right now it's trying to take out that red oscillator and change on in this daily time frame. John, this says it a close below 191.01 today. And we're also below the bottom of its new profile is 192.78. So I'd say the key level here is watching that red oscillator and change on at 190.09. If we close below that, that would suggest to you and I, because that would then say that on a daily basis, Tesla is in an all-out bearish mode. It's below support, uh, profile support, sports, oscillator, and change line support. And that would then suggest going after its uh, Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom from back on February the 5th. Now, that swing point did volume of 134 million shares. In the first two hours of trading, you're at 57 million shares. So this is coming down with volume. So you're looking for support. I'd have to say it's going to be that swing point area. And that swing point range is between 177.11 and 186.49. The low of the day so far has been 189.57. So it's gunning for that swing point. The monthly chart suggests that what Tesla is doing, John, is gunning for the 184.02 level. We are trading below last week's low, so that is then automatically flips to bearish for this week at this moment in time. And if we ask ourselves, where's that next level of support? The answer is in front of us. It's at 184.02, and that's the bottom of its profile. Now, if price were to close below 184.02, that would signal you could see 164 and change. But before price gets there, the monthly uh, profile is bullish in structure, and its buy zone is between 144.38 and 165.67. So, Steve-O, how do you take that whole stew of information that you gave John and uh, summarize it for him? Pretty simple, John. It's like this. If you close below that red oscillator and change line out here, that's at 191.05. You're headed into that swing point from February the 5th out there. Watch that first and how price gets uh, handled there. That'll determine whether or not we need to go look at the weekly and the monthly time frame chart. So hope that helped you out with regard to Tesla. I believe you're also short on Apple, and he's looking for the same piece of information. Where is support out here? So that's a great question. Looks like Apple may have formed an A to B equals CD to the downside. Maybe it's doing it on a weekly basis as well out here. But first, to get to your answer of where is the next level of support in Apple before we do any kind of further analysis, we'd have to say you're trading into that support level as we speak right now. And that is the bullish structured weekly profile. And that's between the range of 172.09 to 174.33. But when we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, we don't see any, even though we're trading into a buy zone on the weekly, we don't see any kind of a bottom pattern or signal on the daily chart out there, nor do we on the monthly. The monthly suggests that it wants to get back towards its recent lows. It's trading inside the swing point. And that was a swing point from October of 2023. And that low is 165.67, so that certainly remains as a possible outcome. We come back from this break, John, I'll go over to my other screens, draw up the A to B equals CD pattern, see what that gives to us, if anything. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're also going to take a look at Natural Gas, Ford, Palantir, URA, UEC, and Gold for Bob in Spokane. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leverage ETFs. Direction Leverage ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So to finish off the chart for Apple, we did mention that the daily time frame uh, looked like it was generating an A to B equals CD to the downside. This is the only A to B equals CD pattern that you can really draw in here. In other words, if I were to, the A point's going to be the same no matter what. That's the high from December 14th. But I can't use it as a C point, the high from January 24th. Why can't you use it, Stevie? Because that was an 83% retracement. You, gotta, you can't get much beyond 0.786. But here we can see we only have a 57% retracement. So there's a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside, John, that would give you an initial price projection of 170.68. That B point did volume of 102 million shares. That was back on February the 2nd. Today, so far, you're at 36 million shares. So it's got similar type volume. Don't know what it will look like at day's end, but that's what I'd be looking for, even if it passes it with lighter volume. 170.68 is certainly a possibility. Let's go out to Martinez. California and speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing quite well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Uh, better now that I hear your voice. And Cybane Stillwater, I know this is something you've been looking at for a while. Uh, tell me what you're looking at and how I can help you. Well, I did go back into this. I guess it was on, I think it was Thursday of last week. It went down and tested that $4 round number low. It didn't get exactly to it, got to 401 Yes. Uh, of course, with much lighter volume, I, I bought in at 402. I, I am holding back a little bit just because they're going to have their earnings tomorrow. Okay. Um, I, according to, to Tom, I talked to him about it you know, yeah. a few days ago, and that's what he came up with. So I just want to have those come out and see how it reacts and before I really go too heavily into it. But I do believe we're pretty far along in the TD count on the weekly. I think it's either eight or nine if you look at that. It looks like, you know, maybe RMI bottoms on both the daily and weekly. Just some things about it. That, I mean, it hasn't really done much, honestly, but it seems like it might be a potentially bottoming here. And I heard your whole conversation about gold. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Perfect. Okay. So let's switch over to the uh, white background charts out here. The first thing 
that I will uh, mention is that you've got to confirm Roads Momentum Indicator bottom on the weekly time frame. And that uh, confirmation came the week of February the 16th out there when it generated that bullish piercing candle. Now, price has been trading with inside its bullish structured profile out there. Last week was a close just below that low. Now, that may have just simply been a false breakdown uh, message out there. That low, by the way, is 422. And we're at 422 right now. So ideally, Brent, you'd see a weekly close about 422. Um, you know, that's the first thing that you'd like to see here and uh, and then that way that uh, roads meant indicator signal uh, maintains itself and you get back into that bullish structured profile zone on a daily time frame out here um, I would so there's no bottom pattern that just sticks out to me like a TD9 oh you had asked about the TD9 counts by the way in the weekly I don't want to ignore that I'm only in bar number two to the weekly time frame from last week to the downside so uh, okay. so that's where I'm at. But it doesn't really, from my standpoint of reading the chart, the weekly already has a bottom. So from a weekly perspective, you've got your bottom signal. From the monthly perspective, you have your bottom signal, which was a TD9 count bottom that formed back in November of last year. And yes, Brent said this hasn't really done a whole lot out there. But what it has done, it's given you two nice bottoms on the weekly time frame. Now, on the daily, uh, even though I don't see, you know, just looking at this sh short version of what I have, I, this was so the bottom signal that you saw on the daily time frame, Brent, was going back against a prior swing low or something, something else. It was the I think all time low, honestly, at that four dollar level. Oh, I got it. Maybe okay, right here. Okay, time, but going back a ways. <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, I see one right here. It was actually back in November of 2023 out there. And that had volume of 42 million shares. And uh, when price was pulling back into it, the first time back in February was 4.9 million shares. 4.9 million shares going against 42. Yeah, you got to love that. That's a daily time frame. I'm sorry, that's a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. So I see exactly what you're looking at on the uh, daily. So on the daily chart out here, your battleground area are its profiles. And those profiles, first being 425. 425 is the center of its profile. We both know that both buyers and sellers exist at that level. Where the buyers exist is at 407 exclusively. And where the sellers exist exclusively is at 437. So we're kind of in between the profile levels. What you'd love to see here is a, a two consecutive close above 437. That would give you a profile change in trend signal, and that would then say the next battle would be at 466. And that would be the center of its weekly bullish structured profile. And a close above that would suggest we move up towards the 555 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly. They've given you all kinds of nice bottom signals, and now you just need the buyers to uh, help you out. I know. Come on already. Get on it. Exactly. What What are they waiting for? <laughs> what are they waiting for? So that's the best that I've got for you, Brent. Is there anything else that I can provide to you on SBSW or anything else? No, that was great, Steve. As always, you're very thorough and give me all the numbers. Now, you know, it's archived. I'll go back, write everything down. and, and uh, Perfect. Perfect. But uh, like you said, and I just got to get on you know, those buyers. Like, come on already. Let's do yeah, it. exactly. Take out an ad, <laughs> would you? <laughs> yeah. All right, All thank right, you Brent. so much, Steve. I know you've got a, a full you know, you line of stuff to take care of there. So, you Just, bet. Uh, Thanks appreciate for calling. your help. Have a great day. Have a great weekend if I don't talk to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, so, our next request, let me see where am I at on my. Uh, is really natural gas. So, let me get over and take a look at natural gas. This is for Joe. And Joe's question is uh, hold or sell? And as, as, yeah, so his first asking was, there, is there going to be a retracement? Well, I can answer that question say, yeah, at some point in time, there's absolutely going to be a retracement inside of natural gas. But the real question was, should he hold or sell boil? Now, I don't know uh, Joe's style of trading. I don't know what his intent was when he entered that trade out there. Let's take a look at what we know about natural gas. The first thing that we know about natural gas is it has a favorable seasonal cycle, and we're in it right now. That favorable seasonal cycle typically begins right in the middle of February, and it lasts through typically the middle of June out there. So I don't know where you entered, Joe. I don't know how low you were at at your entry point, but you may have got a bottom that you wouldn't want to sell. I don't know that, uh, but we are in a favorable seasonal cycle with natural gas. Uh, forming a uh, beautiful daily bottom pattern out here. And that was a buy the D point pattern. And it did it when it generated this bear sash candle, bull sash candle, I should say, on February the 16th. And now you've got an A to B equals CD pattern. We could probably draw in a couple. Uh, are we not showing that chart? 
Oh, we are. Perfect. Okay. So we got that chart out there. Um, so uh, here you've, uh, this is going to go or should go target the 249 level. 249 is a TD nine count breakdown area out there. We're trading above recent highs out here. I don't see any reason to sell. But again, maybe you're just an intraday trader and you're asking, hey, are there any kind of short term sell signals? Well, if you were asking that question, then the answer to that, I go right just simply to the 10-minute uh, time frame chart. You got a beautiful TD9 count, wave number seven top, price trading with inside his profile. If you see a close below uh, the bottom of that profile, 1.935, we ought to see a pullback to 1.946. But if you're asking my honest opinion, again, I don't know where you're in on price, I would hold. I would hold during the favorable seasonal cycle. Nice uh, bottom pattern inside of natural gas. Joe, I hope that helps answer your question. Let's go out to Denver, Colorado and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm feeling great, Steve. Thank you for asking. Hope you feel the same. I am. I am. Glad to hear you're feeling great. So uh, you want to take up soybeans? Calling, I know soybeans. You know, you've been talking about that. It's moving up a little bit today, I believe. But since I don't trade futures, I was looking at a soybean equivalent of SOYB. Perfect. Uh, we'll take a look at SOYB. Does that look like a reasonable, if I were to go out a couple months on an option, does that look like a reasonable play? Well, let's take a look at that when we get back to this break. We'll take a look at the uh, soybean contracts that make up SOYB, and we'll take a look at SOYB as well. See you with TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Ron in Denver, Colorado. We're taking a look at the uh, seasonal chart here, Ron, for soybeans. So this takes us back 33 years. And what I want you to first focus on here is really the bottom right-hand panel. 
And the bottom right-hand panel shows us over this 33-year period how each month performs on average. And we can see that February is typically its best performing month. And March is relatively flat. If you take a look at even the seasonal pattern on the chart, you can see it's relatively flat. So you're asking me about taking a, a option position for the next two months possibly. And April or March is a pretty flat time period for soybeans. Now, maybe it's not going to be flat. I don't know. But I want to provide you with all the data. And based on this here, this chart looks substantially different than the chart that we took a look at for natural gas. So I'd really first throw out to you, maybe your option trade might be better in natural gas than it is in soybeans. But I want to answer your, your soybeans question to first provide you with this information out there. Before I switch over to the charts, any questions about the seasonal data that we're showing right now? No, I, I appreciate the information. Okay, I'm, excellent. I am long the UNG, so I'm, I mean, I'm trying to do okay. an equivalent on natural gas. Yeah. But I was just so, looking to... So I, there are, there, I appreciate that on March. I'll just watch it. Uh, yeah, well, so, so, sure. But let me answer, let me, let me also answer your question because I am long soybeans out here. I uh, still am long soybeans. Sometimes I question that, but I am still long soybeans and via SOYB as well. And the SOYB has three soybean contracts in them. I didn't look at it, see if anything shifted on Friday, but it's May, July, and November. When I say shifted, as far as the weighting is concerned, now each of these have bottoming patterns. So they do justify being in a long soybean contract out here. What they each have to deal with now are some resistance levels. And the resistance levels are up top. So in the case of the May contract for soybeans, it should gun for the 1204 level. In the case of the July contract, 1192. In the case of the November contract, 1159. And all those should take SOYB up to the 2512 level out there. That's what should take place. When I take a look at the intraday charts out here, we've got tops in the May and the uh, July contract. I, I don't personally see a top uh, pattern inside the November contract, but this is all suggesting that right now, price is likely to head lower. Likely to see about 1144 on the May contract, 1154 on the July. Hey, Rod, we're out of time here. My apology for that, but maybe call back in tomorrow. We can have a further discussion, but I'm glad that you're long natural gas. So take care. Thank you, sir. Good to Appreciate hear you. Back. Good to hear from you. But folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Please have a magnificent Monday. Take care.